Now I'll proceed and I invite you to floor Alan. I hope the presentation is this one. As well, it's, it's joining for me to, uh, to say that I'm happy and glad to be here. Uh, a long time ago, that I was uh, not in Sofia, I was here some 10 years ago, regularly meeting some uh, good friends in Sofia. Glad to see some of them back here. And uh, I will talk less about the knowledge, but more about imagination, creativity, crossover innovation, and the role that they have in the development of our smart cities, our smarter societies and the things that we try to develop together. Um, my background is that on one hand I'm an entrepreneur since I'm 18, I'm 52 now, so more than 30 years that I develop companies, associations and activities. Not only in my own town, the region of Brussels, but uh, also throughout Europe because all over I'm a European lover and dreamer. And so next to my professional activities, having an academy, I do represent uh, Brussels region with an organization called Brussels Creative uh, and also a European network called the Creative Ring. Next to that, I like to mention always that I'm a hacker, but a hacker, not the negative hacker that tried to destroy eventually, eventually something, but the one that tried to reinvent systems. When I see something, we try to reinvent the way we do it. So it's a positive hacking a mentality that we try to promote uh, all over Europe. So, when people ask me, like, what, what drives you, and I think it's an insatiable and passionate uh, uh, desire to, to create uh, something new and to, to develop a better Europe that will not be the Europe for us, but I guess for the next generation that are our kids. And that's what uh, drives me every day. When sometimes people are saying, what are you active in? Don't try to make all the nice little uh, brands and, and names that are there. But on one hand, I'm very much involved on the, on the right side of the slide. I'm involved in activities like incubation, acceleration and incubation, having a very large uh, incubator center in Brussels. Some of you know it's uh, called the Egg. And next to that, uh, I'm involved in a lot of training and academic activities, having my own academy where we try to train young professionals or corporates towards innovation and entrepreneurship. But it goes also up to teaching in MBA courses in dance or in private initiatives like Aspire in Romania or Unit City in Kiev. And on the left side, you have much more the involvement into regions, cities, makerspaces, fab labs, corporates and small organizations. That's what drives me every day, and that passions me, and that uh, keeps me busy trying to reinvent the world in which we live uh, today. And I think that an important stuff next to the team of today that is knowledge is the role of creativity. And I believe that creativity is the real engine of the European economy. Will we be, as an industry, the creative industries, it's 13 sectors, will we be the biggest industry in Europe? I don't think but we are certainly an important engine. It means that we, the creative people, that for long were seen as like a small industry because we were talking about automotive, we were talking about pharmaceutical, we were talking about many other industries, but often the creative industries were seen as something small. And today I think it's an important role that is uh, given to the creative mindset and the creative people, people capable to think out of the box. And I think that we need to foster that in our organizations, in administrations, in the universities, in businesses, amongst the citizens. We need to foster creativity, we need to foster curiosity, and do that also every day towards the younger generation. The generation that we try to educate now in the schools and universities. Try to promote creativity and curiosity, because that's what they will need to survive in the world of tomorrow. Design thinking, for the one that knows what it is, is an important for me like operating system. It is a way to put the customer, the consumer, the citizen in the center of all the debates. And today we can talk about smart cities and knowledge, but we need to talk, and many of uh, you were mentioning it, but the role of the citizen. The citizen needs to be in the center of all the debates. That's why design thinking is an interesting approach. 
Why I show this all the time, and, and some of you have seen me on stage already earlier, I continue to, to put these warnings in front of everybody, because I think they are important. We develop smart cities, we develop brands, we develop Europe. And look what we have developed in the last 300 years. Fabulous names, Bayer, Siemens, Airbus, Saint-Gobain, Telefonica, Dior, name them, beautiful brands that we all created two, three hundred years ago. That's when we were creative, when we were leading the world. What we did after that was that we created huge pyramidical systems on top of these organizations. We created pyramidical systems in the public administration, in the big, large corporates, in universities and everywhere, because we needed to be more and more efficient. And what we did with these beautiful inventions was to improve them. We call that incremental innovation. But hey, what is happening today in Europe and in most of our companies, in administrations and in universities, we feel like that. We feel unhappy. We feel disengaged. We don't feel good connected with the cities. We don't feel connected with the universities. We don't feel connected ourselves with the corporates. We are depressed. We all talk about the burnouts and the depression and the disengagement of people in what we do, even in the European dream. And I think we need to reinvent ourselves. Some people are describing it. If you have to read one book, order maybe the book Reinventing Organizations. There is a guy that describes how organizations were evolving or are today still competing and living next to each other in the world, where some are very political oriented. It's the red companies at the bottom. Other ones are called agile are called flexible, lean organizations, where people start to be much more engaged and connected with. What can we learn from them? Read the book and try to learn out about it. You have people, and I'm glad that Stavri told me today that one of the first fab labs is open in Sofia. You have people like Irger Gershenfeld, an MIT professor, who decided some 15 to 20 years ago to change the educational system in the US, and he invented a concept called the fab lab. And now we see fab labs and mega spaces popping up everywhere. Is it about 3D printing? No, it is not about 3D printing. It's about imagination, it's about creativity and curiosity. It is to see how we can make from any idea, any problem, we can try to solve it and to prototype it. And it's about soft skills and not only about hard skills. We, we all talk about the problem of education in our world and a holistic education or a revision of education is very important and crucial for Europe if tomorrow we want to make our next generation ready for their future. The people and the next generation are looking to work differently together. They all love these kind of exercises. What we're going to do this afternoon, I think, is, is part of what we try to educate our companies as well. Co-creation, collective intelligence. They do like hackathons. They do like other workspaces. They do like other boardrooms. They don't want to sit like us here all the day, or to sit in a boardroom. They want different styles, they want different ways to operate. They love mega spaces, they love fab labs. And if we see what has been created here, these names are the companies that are leading the world of today. They are attracting all the talent, they are attracting European young and older citizens. They are attracting them, why? Because they operate differently and they are much more connected and they have like a purpose for their organization. Just as a warning, the previous slide that I showed you, there were like about 15 European names. Here you have about 15 American and Chinese names. If I give you a wallet full of money, and I tell you you can buy the slides, you can buy the two slides, how much money would you need on the stock to buy this slide and the previous one? And I will help you. The first slide with the European brands that we're also proud about and that made Europe great, you would probably need something like 750 billion euro to buy that site on the stock this morning. You have probably more than 5 to 10 million people working in these companies, directly or indirectly, and most of them exist since more than 200, even 300 years. They built Europe. This site, if you want to buy this site, how much money you need? This line exists since less than 20 years. They employ not more than half a million people. The value of that slide 
is something close to six trillion. When six trillion plays in the same room than the one that are all together worth 750 billion, we got a problem. We need to be careful with that because we can develop all the best and smartest cities in the world. If we are not aware of this, then we are blind. And we saw already some industries that were blind. Think about the media industry. They were so blind. They never saw Facebook and Google coming. And now most of the newspapers are dying. And we try to let our journalists survive. But we need to be conscious of this. It's not a war for me against them. It's a war. It's a warning that we as Europeans, we need to rethink our European dream. We need to rethink the way we're going to build Europe and the next generation, but we need to be aware of these facts and figures. We also need to change our mindsets. We are great manufacturers of products, but the world of tomorrow is a world of services. Alibaba is the biggest shop in the world. There's no inventory. Facebook is the biggest media in the world. It doesn't create content. Uber is the biggest operator in car services and doesn't own any car. And same for Airbnb. Think about that. But let's be positive. The world of tomorrow, and I'm sure that in the room, some of you are, are, are certainly creative people as well. But the world of tomorrow is, uh, is probably will be solved by creative people like I hope many of you in the room. We need to be careful again to come back to the warnings. It is today, and I was glad to see that two weeks ago, the inventor of the internet, Mr. Tim uh, Berners-Lee, was in Lisbon, in Portugal, at the Webit conference, at the Web Summit. Webit is from Bulgaria. The Web Summit uh, 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 Congress in Lisbon, and he told for the first time that he was worried about the internet because he thinks that we live in the middle scenario, the decentralized internet, and he was dreaming on the one that is on the right side, the distributed one. We have a couple of gatekeepers that are controlling the entire web. And we need to be careful about that. We need to change it. We need to much more promote in our cities crossover collaborations. When you put architects together, they're going to have fun, eat and reinvent maybe a little bit architecture. And when you put fashion designers, they're going to do the same. And game developers the same. But what about if we put a game developer a fashion designer and an architect together. That will create disruption. That will create some great breakthrough innovation. Not the architects amongst each other, not the fashion designers, but to promote that. When I see the meetings, I think it was in Vienna, the coffee meetings, great. We do that as well. In Belgium, in Brussels, we organized serendipity meetings because serendipity is not happening. Because the lawyers meet with the lawyers and the architects with the architects. We are forcing the people to mingle, to come together and to learn to know each other from different disciplines. Promote this in Sofia as well, the multiple headaches system, where citizens, researchers, politicians and business people are coming together. Large, small, all of them, they need to come and reinvent our cities. And don't think always that it's about Paris and about London and Berlin. It's also about Saint-Étienne and Dresden and about Eindhoven, the smaller cities, post-industrial cities, are full of energy, are full of creativity. We need to involve them in the debate as well. Embrace diversity. The diversity is a power. I'm living in one of the most multicultural cities in the world called Brussels. The other day I had a delegation of Kiev coming and visiting me. And they were shocked. They said in the street, hey Alan, there are no white people anymore in Brussels. And I said, no. 20% are white, 80% are multicultural people coming from everywhere. But we build a better society together. It's rich to be diverse. Use that. Also promote open innovation. I was uh, a couple of months ago, I was in Cluj, uh, and we were talking about the role of open innovation. Open innovation is one of the solutions to start reinventing Europe. And it needs to be open, closed systems. From R&D, large corporates are passé, they're over. They're working on life cycles or on development cycles of three years. In three years' time, Mr. Musk, Elon Musk would have done back and forth from Mars. It's too slow. We need to do open innovation, co-creation, and involve all the different stakeholders. Be careful with our comments. Air, light, wind, 
anything, water, all of these uh, commons will potentially be approached by the large tech groups because they are interested about all of that. So be sure that in the vision of the development of the smartest Sofia, you integrate those notions. How will we protect our commons? Don't talk about the smart city. Talk about the creative city. Talk about the a city of people. Talk about the smart society. But talk about creativity. Build bridges. Build bridges in your own city. Build bridges between your city and other cities. And that's why, I guess, I was involved a couple of years ago in the development and the organization of a new network called the Creative Ring. In the Creative Ring, we try to connect peoples and buildings. That's what I heard from the previous presenters as well. We try, of course, to use technologies to connect those buildings and those people because connecting Trondheim with Eindhoven and Brussels, we can meet, that's still good. We can share a coffee or a good gin and tonic eventually. But what we can also do is through the technologies we can collaborate throughout the borders. We believe in the fact that all this ecosystem, we can call it a think tank, we can call it a collective intelligence, but we believe that the ecosystem can be seen as a service. And I know it's a bit of a buzzword. Everything is as a service nowadays. Uh, I think we even have parents as a service towards their, their kids from time to time. But I believe in the role of ecosystems as a service. We can, we can be there to help regional challenges to be solved. We can collaborate to tackle European challenges. We can collaborate with corporates to help the corporates or the startups to also overcome their challenges. I've put a red circle around Sofia because I will challenge Ruben and some other friends to join the Creative Ring as well. Today we have a number of cities that are already interconnected and part of the Creative Ring. We are growing steadily, slowly, because it's difficult. I'm animating the Brussels ecosystem since 30 years. It's, it's a lifetime journey, it's long. I have more than 700 places projects, people and companies on the map in Brussels that we try to gather and animate regularly. So it takes quite some time before you have an ecosystem. We do use system thinking to try to understand how an ecosystem works. How does the creative ecosystem of Sofia works? First of all, and that's still the theme of my presentation, is put it on a map. Put it on a digital platform so that you can see who is doing what on the Creative Sofia map. Try to connect with those people, try to understand who they are, try to do some exercises about systemic thinking, to try to understand how the interactions and the collaborations are working properly or sometimes are failing. We do have a map, and Stavri uh, is in the room as well. Um, this is a map from a European project that is called Where Sustain, where we try to develop innovative projects in wearables, in fashion tech. Uh, now, all the cities that I've mentioned have put their ecosystem. So you need to understand that a place, a person, a project, a company can put themselves on a map. And they can indicate in what they are specialized. Which means that if we want to, to, call, to answer to a European call dealing with wearables, we just filter, we go on our map, we see who has what kind of expertise and we try to build the bridges connecting the different dots. If you do that at a local level, regional, this is my map of Brussels. I have more than 700 points and I can see all these points in different ways, not worry, it's not only in that way. This is one visualization where I see the interconnections between the different dots. But that's the only way how, with knowledge, I can try to animate, organize and understand my ecosystem. I'm sure that thank you in Bulgaria is somewhere there, I think, on the left. And if not, it's probably somewhere else. But thank you very much. If you want to connect with me, this is my LinkedIn. And other, yeah, remember, my name is easy to remember. Heureux in French means happy. So you met today Mr. Happy. It's me. He exists. Um, and apparently you have a famous Bulgarian happy man as well, I heard. It's a philosopher or something like that. And if you want nice books to read, take the one on the right. There are some interesting books where you can uh, help yourself into the, the strategy and the vision of your smarter society or for the city of people that uh, Sofia is, uh, I'm sure. Thank you very much for the attention.
for this energizing.